Good morning, dear friends. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Today we are beginning a new day. And before we enter into our activities or whatever we want to do, wherever we want to go, let us first listen to the Lord from God's word. And let us humble ourselves and understand what God is saying and be obedient. Today's meditation is titled, Follow the Lord Wholeheartedly. Based on Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. Let me read it for you. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. Not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land I sow to give you of our fathers, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he will see it, and I will give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Following the Lord wholeheartedly. Now God never approve or accept half-heartedness, which he hates. Half-heartedness is to God equal to no heart at all. What was his command? How his people should love him? In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. That is what God desires, wholeheartedness. How should we serve him? The same way, with the same standard, with our whole heart and spirit and soul and strength. That means our whole being is involved in loving God and in serving him. It is that love and that service that is well accepted by the Lord God in heaven. And it is for such a wholeheartedness that he, he rewards. And so let us not forget. Now, soul includes mind and spirit as well. Only our God can demand such love and such service from us. Why? Because that is the way our Lord Jesus Christ loved us and he still loves us. And God the Father is the one who loved us so much. And that is with his whole being, he loved us that he gave his one and only begotten son. Now my friends, Jesus himself said, no, uh, you know, the Bible tells us, no one is willing to give his son or daughter to die for somebody else. That is impossible. But here is a God, a great God, a God who lives, a God who acts with emotion to love his people. And therefore, he is the only one who is eligible or qualified to demand the same kind of love and service from his people. And so he is not pleased with the lip service. He is pleased with the, with the service in which our whole being and love which involves our whole being. And uh, the title Deuteronomy means second law. Uh, now, the book consists of Moses' farewell uh, messages and prophecies. And um, the book consists of Moses' uh, last words. In these messages, he reviewed and uh, renewed God's covenant with his people, Israel for the sake of the new generation of Israelites. 
Because remember, the generation that started off from Egypt all perish. About 600,000 people perish. Because of that many people who are 20 or above. They are the ones who perish in the wilderness. And uh, they had come to the wilderness wandering and ready to enter the land of Canaan. This new generation had uh, no personal a recollection of the first uh, Passover and uh, uh, the, the Red Sea experiences, Red Sea crossing, or the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. So the present generation does not know because 40 years have passed since all these things have happened. Now that generation had perished. The the, the, the generation that started off from uh, Egypt, who witnessed the miracles, the Red Sea crossing and uh, the giving of law and uh, the other mighty, uh, mighty miracles in the wilderness. That generation have perished, not because of old age, sickness or snakes or scorpions, though these animals were there in the wilderness, but they did not die because of them, but because of rebellion, their unwillingness to love the Lord and obey God and follow Him. They became rebels. Neither it was God's will for them to perish in the wilderness. His will was for them to, to, to cross over to the promised land. And even the wilderness was not God's will, therefore. But it was brought upon themselves by their rebellious spirit. Remember, God promised the first generation that he would deliver them and bring them to the land he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their, their forefathers. But they perished because of their constant murmuring, grumbling, disobedience, and rebellion, and idol worship. What is the lesson for us to learn? It is this. God's plan was to bring all of them into the promised land, but only Two out of nearly two million people were allowed to enter there. Nearly 600,000 perished. Men above 20 years old. They were the ones who perished. One can hinder God's plan and purposes for his or her life. And one can thus lose whatever God has planned and God has purposed for his life or her life. I remember, my friends, by our doubts and fears and rebellious spirits and disobedience, we can hinder God's plan for our lives. God's plans for your lives. And I pray that it will not happen. But with patience, you will follow God in love and in obedience. And you shall never regret. Because God will never be unfaithful to any of his promises. He will neither be unfaithful to you, my friends, who, have, who, who, have, who has called you. He will always remain faithful. Now there is a new generation of people ready and about to enter into the promised land. They need a fresh declaration of blessings which will accompany obedience and curses 
accompanying disobedience. Now it was for them to choose whether they want to accept the blessings which will accompany their obedience or curses that will accompany their disobedience. God has made his ways very clear and plain. He said, two paths I set before you. One will lead you to life and the other will lead you to death. Life, if you keep my commandments and if you follow my instructions and love me. And curses, if you disobey my commandments and if you do not follow me in love and in obedience. And so, blessings or curses, it is your choice. And if you choose, this will require an inspired recounting of God's covenant, His law and His faithfulness. We must recollect how faithful and faithful and, and good our God has been in the past. Deuteronomy was written by Moses and delivered to the children of Israel to be read in its entirety once in seven years. What is the lesson for us? My friends, you will remember this. We will continue this tomorrow. And uh, let us understand this truth. Let us not be a hindrance to God's way. God has a plan and purpose for each one of our lives. He has a plan for your life. And don't hinder God from fulfilling His plans and purposes for you so that you can realize it. God's ways and God's plans and thus God's blessing. So be ready as you walk through this wilderness journey. Remember the Lord's presence will protect you, provide you and bless you and you shall never be in want. Keep looking at Jesus and continue your journey. May the Lord bless you and help you in fulfilling God's plan for your life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that by your grace, you keep us true to you. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a wonderful day and have a great time in his presence for today. Amen.